Station. Papa time. And here we are. Um, we arrived in the Shire. Hobbiton right here and we're at our very first Hobbit Hole. This is what the area looks like. It's an entire village. There's 39 Hobbit Holes in total. And it's already really magical. I'm loving it. And we've got the Shire Vegetable Garden, which is a real vegetable garden. Up a little bit closer. So I'm now in front of a real live hobbit hole and it's lovely and it's just about the right size for me. It's very cute. Now the different hobbit holes um, are obviously from different hobbits. Some of them are famous characters from the books and the movies and some um, are different, have different professions and you can see the different professions that might be from. This one says gone fishing and we've got some dried fish here so we really know who lives there, what their job is. Down here we've got a pond. Now um, this was originally a marsh area right here. Um, Peter Jackson didn't like the look of it. He wanted it to be a pretty pond. And so they dug it out and they filled it up with water and turned it into a pond. Now, um, they were filming in the summer months and lots of little visitors came to hang out here. Um, frogs, basically. And there was many, many, many frogs, which are lovely, but they're pretty loud as they are today. And while there were filming scenes up at Bag End and uh, with the actors' important scenes, um, all you could hear over the, the voice of the actors were the frog chorus from down here. So what they had was every morning, it was someone's job to go inside the pond and round up all the frogs and get them out of the way while they were filming. But now they're back and it doesn't matter if they're here because we're not filming anymore. And it's quite pretty. This birds. Now, they have different sized hobbit holes around the set, um, which was to make the scale of things look different. Now, here we've got one of the smaller ones, and this was um, so that when Gandalf goes past, when he walks past, normal sized human, making him look like a seven foot giant, he'll look huge when he walks past the little ones. And then further up, we've got larger hobbit holes with larger doors, so that when the hobbits were going in and out, they would look like really small people going inside normal sized doors. So very clever imagery. Yeah. And in the distance, this big tree here. This is where they had Bilbo Baggins' 71st birthday party. And this gorgeous, huge tree is one of the reasons that Peter Jackson picked this as a location. Now, originally, there was 12 other spots picked out um, around New Zealand to film Lord of the Rings. But once he came here, he saw this tree. He saw how beautiful the area was. He thought, don't need anywhere else. I can film absolutely everything here. And so that's what they did. Alright, so I'm in a real live hobbit hole. It's pretty small inside. It's kind of like a crew member's cabin. Um, but it's super cute. <laughs> so now we're at the big one. This is Bag End, Bilbo Baggins' home. And where he lived with Frodo. It's so cute. And right above it, we've got the old oak tree from the books. And when they started filming here, there wasn't actually a real oak tree here. So this one is made of metal and silicon, and it's completely fake. Um, it doesn't even look it from here. It looks awesome. And they've got 200,000 fake leaves that are on that tree that they had to put on by hand, uh, by wire. And the tree was all made up, ready to go, 10 days before shooting. Um, um, they decided basically that um, the leaves were the wrong colour and so Peter Jackson decided the leaves were the wrong colour so every single leaf had to be spray painted by hand to become the exact correct colour. So the attention to detail was amazing and this is back in. Now, how the hierarchy works with the, the houses here in Hobbiton, the higher up the house is, the more wealthy the person is and the more fancy they are, right up at the top. So Bilbo Baggins was pretty important. And as we go further down, we've got the more simple houses, the smaller doorways, and where the, the more regular people with regular jobs would live. Um, and so in here, we've got the cheesemaker's house. You can see inside it's full of cheese, which is awesome. And outside there's a little workbench here with some cheese. So over here, this is Sam and Rosie's house at the bottom of the hill, and we just there's something really cool. And so the final scene of the movie where 
where Sam comes back from all his adventures and he sees Rosie and he meets the kids there. Um, the kids are actually um, Sean Astin, the actor's real children. And as a surprise, they dressed as children up as the Hobbit children. And so to make it create a real family atmosphere when he came up to start filming it. However, when he walked up the hill and he walked in and he saw his own children dressed up as little hobbits, he just absolutely broke down and burst into tears, which was really adorable. Um, but they had to reshoot it several times, quite a few times, um, to make sure that they got it right. But it really made it look very, very real. And this is their house. We got a monarch butterfly flying it's around. We took a picture of one. The problem is the rain washed all the stuff out of the flowers. Now over here we've got a whole bunch of sheep that New Zealand is known for. Now these are the original sheep that were on the farm. Now when they started to film um, Lord of the Rings, Peter Jackson decided that these sheep looked too modern. So he had um, his own personal herd of 200 sheep brought over, um, Suffolk um, sheep originally brought over from England um, with the little brown faces and feet um, to make them look more the oldie worldy um, than the modern ones. But now the filming is done, the regular ones are back and they look very happy over here. Now the details on the set are amazing. There's even a village notice board down here where you can buy a pony, there's a smoke ring contest, fiddle lessons, and fresh eggs. And there's a buckling spear as well. There's pony rides, toffee apples, and everything. And we're heading over to the Green Dragon. And this is the Green Dragon pub. And this is Hobbiton. From the pub, you can see all of the village. And it's lovely. And when you come in, you get a drink as part of the tour. There's two different types of beers to choose from. Hard apple cider, ginger beer, and tea and coffee. Hi. May I have um, a hard apple cider? Yes. Thank you. And they're even served in ye olde style mugs. Thank you. Now the pub is really, really cute. Um, every detail perfect. There's an old hearth fire with old chairs. There's the hobbit round doorways everywhere. The beans, it's lovely. And if you've got more time here, uh, they do have a menu. They've got pies, cheese mouse traps, plum and sandwich, biscuits, scones, and muffins. So even the menu is in character. So we have one muffin and a small. Oh, lovely. Like yes, please, that'd be lovely. And while you're in the Green Dragon Inn, I've got my apple cider, which is very nice. Hard apple cider. And then also we've got a scone um, and a muffin as well. This is a nice snack we get. You can sit back by the fire and come to chair and And even have some coffee as well. Go to the other gift shop. Now there's two gift shops. This is the one in Hobbiton. It's a little bit smaller. And then the other one at the entrance is a little bit bigger. This is what the landscape looked like here. So when Peter Jackson decided to film um, the movies here, basically they did an aerial shot, they flew over it, they saw this, and went, yep, this is the Shire. Alrighty everybody, so as we come through these gates, that does officially conclude our tour of the Hobbiton movie set and farm. And that's the Shire's rest. So I just want to thank you so much for coming and I hope you so we're back in the gift shop. This is the one as you come in the entrance. This is a larger one. Um, some of the awesome things you can buy. Your very own elf ears. You can buy the shawls, beers, mugs, lots of things. Other fun things you can buy. Penguin poo, kiwi ooey, lovely. <laughs> Squash mushrooms. And postcard, which is what I'm gonna get. Lord of the Rings Monopoly. And if you do come out here by yourself, you can get a ticket on your own, but be warned, and um, the tickets are fully booked very quickly. Today's completely booked out, and the next one's at five o'clock tomorrow. Um, prices on your own, $79 an adult, $39.50 for a youth up to 16 years. Under nine years, it's free. Um, there's possibly a crew discount after a um, crew coming out by themselves as well. And if you do come out by yourself, um, make sure you book your ticket in advance. They always book up, so book in advance, book in advance. And uh, this is where you'd wait, um, and the tours leave on the hour and half past the hour, and this is where the groups would be going from. 
and also they have Wi-Fi in the coffee shop upstairs which also works down here um, and it's called Free Hobbiton Wi-Fi um, you don't need a password so that's quite handy as well there's a cute coffee shop upstairs um, if you didn't have enough with the cider or the beer or the coffee and stuff um, and it's just a nice little place to hang out and there's time to shop and this is a coffee shop upstairs Awesome view here. It was misty when we came in this morning, but now you can see for miles. It's lovely. So that was another great day in the port of Taronga. Um, I loved Hobbiton, it was awesome. And also if you're in Mount Monganui, make sure you look out um, for the market in the park if you're here on the weekend. And that's it, it was a great day. And see you soon.